Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Rory Bazio at the finish of the 2012 Western States 100. Yeah. How are you, Rory? I'm feeling good. Feeling really good. You had one heck of a race yesterday. It was a good time. Lots of speedy women out there that I got to run with. So yeah, I'd say it was the highlight of my short racing career by yeah, far. Yeah, I mean, so. coming into the race, you'd run a fourth place here. You'd run a fifth place here. So uh -huh. was that around 1820, 1830? Yeah, for last year. Yeah. And then the first year I did it, it was like 1930-ish. Something like that. So, and I know you run these races sort of as an adventure, but yeah. in your mind, did you have sort of an idea of how fast you thought you could run? No, not at all, especially since the past two years they've done that altered course, um, which actually doesn't suit me very well because just so much of it was flat and like on that, that road. Um, this year I loved the you know original course. Um, I definitely thought it was more challenging, especially since it was so cold and windy, but I really like that. Um, but I had no idea how that would alter the times. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I literally, honestly, didn't look at my watch till we got to No Hands Bridge. And I was like, oh, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> did, um, did your smile get even bigger than normal? Yeah, I was like, I kind of had a number in my head at that point, and I was like, okay, I think we can get there. So, yep. yeah, yeah. Very cool. Did, uh, how did your race play out from you know during the day? Um, I started off a lot faster or like up with women who I usually don't run with. Um, and, but I was feeling good. So I was like, I'll just go with it. I kind of hit a hard patch from like Duncan Canyon to Robinson's flat. And I was like, oh, if I'm feeling this crappy, <laughs> I've got a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of miles to go. Um, but it came back and um, after, like once I got to last chance, I felt pretty good the, the whole way in for the most part. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So where were you, I mean, where do you start moving up through the field? I think, um, I think I was kind of in third place for actually a while and then Eliza and caught me at Devil's Thumb and we mm -hmm. ran to El Dorado together, which was super fun. She which was almost the same place you guys ran together last year. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, my favorite. She <laughs> was, we just like girl talk and uh, it's just like out running with your friend. So it makes it really fun. And then we got to El Dorado and we're like, well, should we hike out or run out? And we're like, no, let's hike out up to Michigan Bluff because we want to save our legs. And of course we look behind us and Nikki's like charging up the hill. So we're like, God, oh, man, we're gonna have to catch up. So we kind of got on Nikki's tail and just kind of dragged ourselves running up the hill, which I had never done before in the past two years. Um, yeah, and then we all kind of stayed together for a while and kind of chased each other down going down to the river um, mm -hmm. so it was really it was really fun and then Eliza and I hiked out uh, up to Green Gate together um, yeah. and yeah she held the raft for me which was really nice so um, yeah it was just a fun fun time out on the trails so and did you did she slow down at some point or did you just have a good patch and you said this is the time to go I kind of um, I know that back section pretty well and I had trained on it and so I I actually like how it kind of undulates and you kind of stretch out your legs because at that point it feels pretty good to kind of just get the leg speed going and so I felt good and I just told my pacer just you know stick on my butt and crack the whip and he did and so we just kept moving so, yeah yeah so I mean each year you've gotten progressively faster and especially this is being sort of a the harder course mm -hmm. even a good day have you learned things with your hunters progressively that you know you're you're just dialing it in each time? Anything? Kind of. I guess I would definitely say figuring out when to hold back, um, even if you feel good. Like, I was feeling pretty good. Um, we were running with Nikki and her pacer Stephanie down to the river, and I was actually feeling pretty good, and I was like, I could kind of go for it now, but I knew I'd probably be paying for it later, just all that hammering on that quad mm -hmm. on that section. So we kind of just stuck with Nikki, and um, I knew I kind of wanted to have speed in my legs left for that last 20. Yeah. Um, Cause the first year I did it, that was the hardest section for me. I just got bogged down and it's just easy to kind of plod along at that point. And so I really wanted to feel pretty good there. So I kind of held held it till there. So is there, you know, in your previous, you the three previous hundreds or you know, just two, two. Western, just, just two, yeah, just yeah. Western States. I mean, in either of them, had there been a point late in the race where you like, aside from right at the finish, you know, you decided it's time to push it rather than hold on me. Like, I was think, this a different um, ability? We, my pacer, John and I had been getting, we got splits at Greengate, like, okay, Lizzie's, fifth, we had known kind of all day, like Lizzie's like 20 minutes in front of you. And I was like, oh, 20 minutes, that's, 
that's, that's long to me. I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to catch her. Um, and then we got splits at um, ALT. Like, oh, she's, you know, 12 minutes now. And then seven minutes. So when we heard, like, she was only seven minutes coming out, it must have been an ALT. I was like, I think we could do that. So at that point, we were kind of like, let's just try and see if we can catch up to her. So that's kind of when we put the hammer down. So Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you are one of the most positive people out in the course. Not even I positive, but like <laughs> outright fun. Like, yeah, how does I, that help your racing? I think it just makes it, for me, it takes the pressure off. And I think if you're not going to have fun, I don't know why you would want to run 100 miles unless you've got some like sadomasochist thing going on because <laughs> it could be a real struggle. And I totally understand just, you know, wanting to do the race. But I think this event in particular, they put on such a good event. And like all the volunteers and my family comes out for this and like my sisters and it's just like this like so fun to feel so much support mm -hmm. um, it's like kind of just a selfish day where it's all about you so I kind of revel in it um, <laughs> and then the people I run with like you know like running with Eliza or Nikki or I ran with Mike Wardian for a while are just like super fun I feel like the best people I meet in life are at these races so totally. it's really fun so I love it so I guess I really don't have to ask the question when we see you back here yeah Next year. <laughs> I told I told Tim Twitemeyer I'm gunning for his 25 years, so. You've got a good start. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm like, I'd like to get to 10, but um, yeah. yeah, I love this event, and I'm super stoked for Craig to take over eventually. I think he'll just make it even better than it already is. So, yeah, it's a fun time. Congratulations on Thanks. a great run, Rory. Thanks. Thanks for doing all this. So. It's, oh, I love it. Peace. <laughs> for the bonus. Oh. Give us a joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see. A uh, candle walks into his therapist's office and says, Doc, I got a problem. The doctor says, what's the problem? I'm having a meltdown. <laughs> really good. I can't tell you anymore that because otherwise they're not too PC. Yeah, the one at the finish line will <laughs> we'll have you repeat. <laughs> That's right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>